Listen. You smell something? Skunkworks. A group with a high degree of autonomy and unhampered by bureaucracy. This is Skunkworks. <laughs> You can watch the Skunk Work Show live right now at skunkworkshow.com. The Skunk Work Show, powered by Iron Laboratories. Welcome, I'm your host, Ryan. You're listening to The Skunk Work Show. Sitting in with us today is Alicia and Uncle Skunky. You can watch us every week from 4 to 5 p.m. at skunkworkshow.com. That's right. You can watch us every week at theskunkworkshow.com. We have a full tray for you today. Here's Alicia with the rundown. Hi, I'm Alicia. On today's show, we have the news, a new 420 song of the week, Man on the Street, We'll be talking with Michigan State House Representative Jeff Irwin, Justin Jenkins with the West Coast Report, and Uncle Skunky with the Medical Bed Report. All right, so that is a full tray. It's a, an election day show, um, election day being Tuesday, November 4th, which we encourage all our listeners and friends to get out there and definitely vote because... That's your chance to get your voice heard and make decisions, and it's important. And make sure that uh, you do your research, too. Yeah, we, uh, you got to know what you're voting for. Just going in there and voting is, uh, you know, a little haphazard. You should research, you know, the, uh, the agenda of the candidate that you're voting for so you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I got a um, newspaper article that uh, I read, and that's how I'm researching. Huh, yes, we're on, uh, there you go, it seemed like, uh, try it out. Okay, no, we're having problems with my microphone. Yep, there's no Uncle Skunky today. <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah, get out there and vote. Tuesday's a very important day. Um, you want to make sure that you're, uh, you're on top of it and that, uh, things are going well. So, um, are you going to vote, Alicia? Absolutely. Um, so Alicia's going to vote, and Skunky's going to go vote, and uh, you know I'm sure our board op Kevin's going to vote. So you know just make sure you get out there. You got all day to do it. You know, unfortunately Michigan isn't like some states where there you can take a couple days to do it. We only have Tuesday from I believe polls open at 8:30 or 9 at the latest, and go until 8 o'clock at night. Um, so get out there and get it done. Um, if you're not voting, then you got no right to complain is some of our viewers or listeners have told me in the past. Um, so we will see how it goes on Tuesday. Um, where do you vote at, Alicia? Um, well, I live in Waterford Township, so I usually go right down the road on Cass Lake Road. Can't even remember the name of the place. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, there it's you go. It's an old so school you know building. Where you, you know where your voting I know where places. I have to go, yes. What <laughs> always makes me laugh is the people that don't seem to know where their polling place is. It's like, have you voted before? Yes. But they don't know where their polling place is. It's like, that's just ridiculous. But uh, So you know where you have to go and what you have to do. Yes. And uh, that's cool. So, well, like we said, we expect everybody that's listening to get out there and vote and drag a friend with you who usually doesn't vote because we need everybody out there participating in the democracy and making sure it's cool so we'll be back with you in two minutes and two seconds we'll cover some news and we got some news about kigo harbor that was interesting we were there this week so stick with us we'll talk about kigo and what's going on in the world today watch the skunk Works show live on skunkworkshow.com the skunk Works show powered by iron laboratories
At Iron Laboratories, our mission is to apply the highest scientific standards to the testing of medical marijuana and derivative cannabis-based products. Iron Laboratories achieves this through the strict application of and adherence to methodologies that have been developed in research, regulatory, and academic settings. Consumer safety directs everything we do at Iron Laboratories. Our role as providers of product information to patients, caregivers, and producers is critical. The purity of the medicines that you put in your body is critically important and we value the trust you put in us to evaluate and accurately report on these products. In addition, Iron Laboratories will continue to contribute to the industry knowledge base, setting benchmarks and establishing norms to create safer cannabis products. Give us a call at 248-313-9000 or visit our website at ironlaboratories.com. Again, that's 248-313-9000, ironlaboratories.com. Folks, here's some food for thought. Every year, over 400,000 people die of illness related to tobacco use. Over 80,000 die from alcohol use. Over 30,000 die from reactions related to prescription medication. And more than 7,000 people die from the use of anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. Aspirin. Do you know how many die from the use of marijuana? Zero. No deaths can be directly linked to the use of cannabis. That makes it one of the safest substances available for medical use. Michigan Organic Solutions, Flint's premier medical marijuana consultants, is now offering compassionate doctor referrals. Get licensed for only $99. You only pay if you qualify. No medical records are required. Located at 3549 South Dort Highway, Suite 117, just across from the Dort Mall. Call 810-820-8953 or go online to make your appointment at www.miorganicsolutions.com. Consultations are free and your privacy is guaranteed. Log on now to www.miorganicsolutions.com. The first Bibles, maps, charts, Betsy Ross's flag, the first drafts of the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution were made from hemp. Amen! Two steps higher, your old school head shop has your full selection of smoking needs. Water pipes, hand pipes, concentrate pipes, concentrate accessories, vaporizers, rolling papers, detox products, women's clothing, t-shirts, discs, golf, skateboards, and hookahs, bitch. Check us out online at twostepshigher.com or give us a call, 655-0032. The Skunk Work Show, powered by Iron Laboratories. Attention all units, attention all units, this is Sergeant Stadenko. Attention all units, this is Sergeant Stadenko. We are changing from a Code 3 direct pursuit to a Code 347. Completely lost due to incompetence. All right. We're going to have to play uh, play a little musical chairs today, but that's okay. <laughs> so, voting's important. This whole show is kind of dedicated to making sure people get out there and handle that. You know, of course, we're your cannabis radio show but uh voting is very important to the cannabis movement and that's why we're dedicating this show to the vote so there's all these ballot initiatives uh on tuesday that people have worked on all year and some of them longer than a year um east lansing montrose um in Kego harbor all had enough signatures to get decriminal decriminalization ballots put on you know, for the vote this this Tuesday. Um, the funny thing is, is the signatures were there. However, you're not going to get the opportunity to vote. Um, those three cities, and I think there's even a fourth one, the clerks in those cities did not send the proper paperwork to the county to get those initiatives on the ballot, which is, I don't know, a form of corruption, in my opinion, um, lack of enthusiasm for the marijuana community, the cannabis community, whatever you want to say. I feel it was deliberate. So we went into Kego Harbor on Thursday and wanted to talk to the clerk about the ballot initiatives, the signatures, why they weren't submitted to the county clerk and put on the ballot. And I was in there with Alicia, who works the camera for me, and we were handed this notice. So Alicia, why don't you give them a Give them a reading of the notice we were handed by the city clerk of okay. Kego Harbor. Dear Mayor Yoder, members of council, and Miss Vowell, in response to the community controversy about the ballot proposal turned in by Mr. 
Torzos for our charter amendment, I offer the following. It appears there was a miscommunication between my office and the city clerk's office regarding whether or not the city clerk had to wait for the letter from the Governor Snyder before taking the ballot proposal to Oakland County for filing for the November 4th, 2014 election. When the language was provided for the county, the deadline for the ballot language had unfortunately been missed. The late filing for the ballot proposal was an inadvertent error and was not the effort of anyone for and on behalf of the city to preclude the citizens of Kego Harbor voting upon this proposal. In, fact, in actual fact, speaking to MCL 117.25, the city clerk had 45 days within which to examine the signatures to ensure their vitality. The city clerk front-loaded the effort by certifying the petitions shortly after receiving them and forwarding the information on to the Attorney General and Governor. Unfortunately, the back-end deadline was missed, and because of the late filing of the petitions on July 29th and the 45 days allowed, it is possible the Charter Amendment would not have met the county deadline. All Charter Amendments must be at a regularly scheduled city election, Fortunately, we have annual city elections in Kego Harbor, and although the November 4th, 2014 election has been missed because the petitions are valid, this matter can and should be placed on the ballot for regular city election occurring in November 2015. It is unfortunate this matter occurred, but the matter can be rectified at the next city election. I would be pleased to discuss this matter with you further. I remain respectfully submitted. Thomas J. Ryan, City Attorney. So the way that reads to me is we had the paperwork. We could have been a little more proactive with the paperwork, but because there's a 45-day period that we have to look at those signatures and make sure they're valid, you didn't get it to us in time, so we didn't have enough time to look through them. It, it, it's just silly. It's funny how, you know, because it's such a big election, it's a governor election in Michigan. So for a midterm here, it's it's big because it's our governor election midterm. Um, you know, this is the time that we want people out. This is when you're going to get your biggest voter turnout is because it's a governor's election. Um, in 2015, so we have to wait another year. Um, there, are, you know, in my opinion, they hope that you know because it's not a governor election, it's not a president election. That in 2015, not very many people will come to the polls, and therefore they can maybe, you know, have a better chance at you know crushing this movement or not having it pass. So. It sounds like a bunch of fishy hooey, in my opinion, but uh, it is what it is. Um, we will be posting that letter up on our website so people can go and check it out and take from it what they, you know, what they read out of it. And you can call the city if you're a member of Kego Harbor resident and ask them why you weren't being represented properly. So we're going to move on to the news um, here in... Uh, there's more election news and big official things going on. So right now I've got uh, the news brought to you by the Michigan Medical Marijuana Report. And here's Uncle Skunky to give you the updates. Yes, and you know that it is election week, so I'm going to be sharing a lot of news for elections. And we're going to go out to the West Coast. I got We're going to start out with three stories out of Oregon. A group of more than 30 cops, sheriffs, attorneys, and judges wrote in a pro-marijuana endorsement for the Oregon's Measure 91, which voters approved for next week. This group mentions that treating marijuana as a crime has failed. U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley, a Democrat from Oregon, will be voting to legalize limited amounts of recreational marijuana in Oregon next week. Merkley is tired of seeing resources wasted on a failed war on pot. He also says he sees both sides of the argument, but what is of concern is the new products that will come out and that there isn't a real track record coming from Colorado and Washington. Merkley wants the money in the criminal justice system to be utilized properly and that he leans in the favor of this ballot measure. 
Colorado and Washington might not be alone next week. Marijuana legalization initiatives are on ballots of Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, D.C. Oregon's Measure 91 would legalize possession amounts up to 8 ounces and the growing of four plants for adults over 21. Taxes of an ounce would be $35.00. Washington, D.C.'s Initiative 71 would make possession up to two ounces in public, legal for people over 21. The same adults could cultivate up to six plants with only three in flower. Uh, Because of the D.C. law, there will be no tax provision yet. Uh, Alaska's Measure 2 will allow one ounce of pot and can grow six with only three in flower like D.C., but this will allow dispensaries to pay tax revenues. Wow, so... We've got three, well, two states in the District of Columbia, which for all you teachers out there, the District of Columbia is not a state. The only reason I say that is my daughter's in school. Last year she was in the fifth grade, and her teacher was telling her that the District of Columbia was a state. What? Yeah, I'm thinking, (laughs) wow, you're a teacher and you're feeding disinformation to these kids. So... That's the only reason I bring it up. So we'd have Oregon, Alaska. We have Washington and Colorado. So that would be four states and the District of Columbia, which is funny. I mean, that's the one that I see being the biggest prize. Um, There's Sniffer, so you know our 420 song's coming. Um, Because it's the the capital of the country. So if they decriminalize marijuana in D.C., I mean, somebody's going to take notice, yeah? Yes. I mean... Is that going to make, do you think that pushes any representatives to start taking this seriously? You never know. <laughs> Crazy. Um, here's our 420 song. It's Jane's Addiction, Mountain Song. Call next week and you can win a pen if you remember that. Submit your request for a 420 Song of the Week at skunkworkshow.com. The Skunk Work Show, powered by Iron Laboratories. Folks, here's some food for thought. Every year, over 400,000 people die of illness related to tobacco use. Over 80,000 die from alcohol use. Over 30,000 die from reactions related to prescription medication. And more than 7,000 people die from the use of anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. Aspirin. Do you know how many die from the use of marijuana? Zero. No deaths can be directly linked to the use of cannabis. That makes it one of the safest substances available for medical use. Michigan Organic Solutions, Flint's premier medical marijuana consultants, is now offering compassionate doctor referrals. Get licensed for only $99. You only pay if you qualify. No medical records are required. Located at 3549 South North Highway, Suite 117, just across from the Dort Mall. Call 810-820-8953 or go online to make your appointment at www.miorganicsolutions.com. Consultations are free and your privacy is guaranteed. Log on now to www.miorganicsolutions.com. Did you know that hemp is a sister plant to marijuana, but it won't get you high? (laughs) What the f***, man? Two steps higher, your old school head shop has your full selection of smoking needs. Water pipes, hand pipes, concentrate pipes, concentrate accessories, vaporizers, rolling papers, detox products, women's clothing, t-shirts, disc golf, skateboards, and hookahs, bitch. Check us out online at twostepshigher.com or give us a call, 655-0032.
At Iron Laboratories, our mission is to apply the highest scientific standards to the testing of medical marijuana and derivative cannabis-based products. Iron Laboratories achieves this through the strict application of and adherence to methodologies that have been developed in research, regulatory, and academic settings. Consumer safety directs everything we do at Iron Laboratories. Our role as providers of product information to patients, caregivers, and producers is critical. The purity of the medicines that you put in your body is critically important important and we value the trust you put in us to evaluate and accurately report on these products. In addition, Iron Laboratories will continue to contribute to the industry knowledge base, setting benchmarks and establishing norms to create safer cannabis products. Give us a call at 248-313-9000 or visit our website at ironlaboratories.com. Again, that's 248-313-9000, ironlaboratories.com. The Skunk Work Show, powered by Iron Laboratories. Attention all units, attention all units, this is Sergeant Stadenko. Attention all units, this is Sergeant Stadenko. We are changing from a Code 3 direct pursuit to a Code 347. Completely lost due to incompetence. All right, we're back. Um, as I said, it's an election-based show. We were, uh, we were in Bloomfield doing Man on the Street, talking to people outside of the post office. Um, when we do Man on the Street, we've been kicked out of some different malls and some different places, so we have to be careful about who allows us to film and interview people. The post office being a government institution is pretty cool with it. So we sat outside the post office at Telegraph and Square Lake Road and talked to people about voting and what they think Michigan, where we're at, and what we need. So we check it out. Show in Flint called the Skunk Work Show. Skunk Work. Skunk Works Show. Skunk Animal. That's right. Got Absolutely. it. Turn down for this is Ryan reporting for the Skunk Work Show, WFNT in Flint, and I'm standing with Megan Cooper. Where are you from, Megan? Bloomfield Hills. You know, there's an election coming up next Tuesday, right? Yes. What do you think about the state of affairs in Michigan? Are you happy with the way things are going, or are you looking for a change? Good work's been done. More to be done, though. I think we're not where we need to be. Well, there's a governor election. Are you pleased with the governor, or are you looking to switch out? I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm a school teacher, so I take certain issues with decisions he made regarding public education, but I see goodness that he's spreading other places, so I have to kind of weigh my options. So you're not against him. You see him as a businessman more than maybe a politician? Yes. Now, there's a lot of rumors. I've seen commercials that say he cut over $8 million in school funding. I've heard other commercials that said he added $8 million. You're a teacher. What do you think he did? Did he take or add? I think it's probably somewhere in the middle. It usually is. There's right side, left side, and the truth usually lies somewhere in between. I know what cuts he made in public education, whether he's going to admit to them or not. So, like I said, I'll just kind of have to weigh my options and see where I'm at. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm standing with... Linda. Where are you from, Linda? Bloomfield Hills. So you're a resident. How long have you lived here in Michigan? My whole life. What do you think of the state of affairs in Michigan currently? Are you happy with the way things are going? I'm so very thankful that Snyder's our governor, and I'm hopeful for four more years for him. So he's done a couple things that have made people question. One thing he did was the right to work. Was that a good or a bad thing? I think it was a great decision. It's opened up our state to increased investment for business. The second thing that people questioned is his Medicaid expansion for the health care. Did you think that was a good idea? I think it was a very divisive issue, but in the end, I trust Snyder to make the right decision on behalf of all the people of Michigan. What's one of the biggest concerns that you have nationally? I think the inconsistency of policies coming from the federal government, I think a lot of the overreaction of Ebola is primarily due that the government is coming, the federal government under Obama has very inconsistent positions and this always makes people feel uneasy. Does Ebola play any relevancy in the way you're going to vote? Mm, Ebola not particularly, but I think it is part of what's going to influence me to vote for one party or another. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We're here in Bloomfield, and I'm speaking with... Ed Jones. Where are you from, Ed? Uh, Southfield. Are you happy with the way things are going here in Michigan? I'm not unhappy with the way things are going. 
what's the biggest issue that should be focused on this year in Michigan? I don't know if there's one biggest issue, but one that I think is pretty important are the roads. I think a lot of people would agree with you there. Yeah, yeah. The election's Tuesday. Are you looking for a change in leadership or are you happy with the way the leadership's handled right now? Um, as far as the governor, I'm happy with them. He did a couple things that were considered controversial. One thing is, is the right to work. He brought that in and signed the bill. Do you think that was a good or a bad thing? You know, some parts about it I like, some parts I didn't. Medicaid expansion, he also signed that, which a lot of people didn't like. You know, it was kind of a 50-50 between the two. What do you think about the Medicaid expansion, good or a bad idea? Um, can you ask me a specific part, maybe? And I could... Well, it was part of the Obamacare, and what it does is it allows a lot of underprivileged people to get health care that couldn't afford it otherwise. So do you think it was a good idea that he took advantage of that? I, I do agree with people who couldn't afford to get it. I didn't necessarily agree with Obamacare because some things were promised that didn't happen. Some people that had really good coverage lost it. Some people that had really good coverage had to get other coverage that was more expensive but not as good. So there's parts I liked, there's parts I didn't like. But people being able to afford health care that couldn't afford it, I think is a good thing as long as it's not being abused. What do you think about the Ebola scare? Do you think it's a lot of hype or do you think that there should be some concern? Yeah, I think it should be some concern. I don't think that's hype. People, people are dying from that. Is it going to affect anything as far as the election for you and the way you vote? No. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks. And I'm standing with Helen Bingham. Where are you from, Helen? Detroit, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. So you've been here for a minute. You've seen the ups and downs in this state. Yes, I have. Are you happy with the way things are going right now? No. What's one of your biggest concerns? These Republicans. You feel that they're not being proactive for business? They're not being fair to the people? What part of them? They're being active for the business, but they are. What people don't understand is the Republicans, they vote for the money because they don't care. They make money in all these foreign countries because this is where their money is, where their investments are. So they're not worried about the people. They're worried about their own pockets. They're worried about their own pockets. So I guess I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're looking for a change in the governorship come Tuesday. Yes, I am. And I will be out to vote. What's the biggest national issue that you think we need to focus on? Um, the pensions and the seniors, the ones that have worked all their life and put into making this country what it is, the unions. And then I also would like to tell the young people, make sure you get out and vote. And that way you don't you can't complain when things don't go your way. Very good. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. This is Skunk Works. All right. That was our election coverage man on the street, which uh, we had a nice cross community there some uh republicans some democrat and some independents so it was uh it was funny it's always funny being in bloomfield hills though it's uh pretty conservative so every once in a while you filter in with some liberal ideas but most of the time it's pretty heavily on the conservative side and just so the audience knows oakland county is like one of the five richest counties in the united states actually in the top three top three and okay it used to be number one but since the economic downturn in 2002 things changed but yeah it is so, one of the richest so you are going to have a lot of conservative people in that uh, area which so, so you know west bloomfield is in oakland county and so that's there you go absolutely um so right now we have jeff Irwin, state representative from the 53rd district on the line jeff how you doing today I'm doing great. How are you? Real good. Uh, you're out beating the street today, were you? I was actually in uh, West Bloomfield and, and Wixom, uh, knocking on doors, talking <laughs> to voters, trying to encourage them to get out to vote. Nice. Yeah, as we have all day here on the show, we uh, we have dedicated the show to being an election show and getting the word out and hope, hopefully encouraging people to uh, participate in this democracy. Especially the young voters, because there's a lot of young people that don't vote. I didn't vote when I was younger, and it wasn't until I got older and realized that politics and running the country and the city and everything is so important that I had to start voting, and it's important to know who we have in office. How, uh, how was your day? I mean, good responses? Are people engaged? What, what are you seeing out there in the streets? 
Uh, well, well, you know, definitely good responses. I mean, you mentioned that, uh, you know, oftentimes places like West Bloomfield are considered pretty Republican areas, but I'll tell you one thing that people in places like West Bloomfield care about are good quality schools. That's one of the reasons that people move to places like that, and people are pretty fired up about what this governor has done to our schools for the last three years. Um, if you look back at the tax changes that he made in 2011, you know, the single biggest thing that Rick Snyder can take credit for doing, uh, what he really did is he reorganized our tax policy so that uh, the rich pay a whole lot less and the poor pay a whole lot more. And uh, he made up the difference by also taking a lot of revenue out of schools. Uh, you know, the, the tax changes he made in 2011 reduced business taxes by uh, about $1.8 billion a year, and $600 million of that is coming right out of K-12 every year. And then he also started diverting about $400 million a year to uh, higher education from the K-12 funds. Uh, and, you know, together that's a billion dollars every year that K-12 schools have lost, $3 billion since he's been governor. So places, places like West Bloomfield where they care about the quality of their schools, they know that that adds up to future prosperity and higher property values, they're pretty fired up about what the governor's done to our schools. Nice. Um, I was on your website a couple times over the last week here. Charter schools is something that I see on there. Um, you know, it seems to be an issue for you that you're uh, on top of, which I appreciate. Do you think that what you just talked about with the governor moving money around and changing some of the some of the finances in the public school arena is to open the door a little wider for charter schools, possibly? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what his motivations are, so it's hard to speculate on that. But he has been a big supporter of charter schools. And one of the things that happened in 2011, shortly after he became governor, is that he expanded greatly the authority for new charter schools to open in Michigan and also expanded greatly the authority for cyber charters to operate in Michigan. And one of the things that I was saying back then in 2011 and that recently I've introduced bills on is that we got to make sure these new charter schools are held to a standard of accountability and transparency that is on par with what we require of public schools. Because really what we're asking parents to do is we're asking parents to make a choice about where to send their, their kids. And parents have a hard time making that choice if they don't have basic information, like what are these schools spending the taxpayers' dollars on? Are they spending it on profit and administration and sweetheart real estate deals with people who are brothers or cousins of those on the board? Or are they spending that, those taxpayer dollars in the classroom on teachers and supplies and you know, enrichment for the kids? In my understanding is, is the charter system and the online charter system also, the accountability is not the same as it is for public school as far as the money and the resources and how they're spent. Yeah, well, there, there are some rules about them reporting how they spend their money, but here is the big, big hole. What happens in about just shy of 80% of Michigan charter schools is that they're run by for-profit companies. And what happens is in those cases, the charter board will sign one single contract with the company that's running the school. And then all the information that the taxpayers have about where their money is being sent is that they see this one big contract with this education management company. What, what I'm seeking to do and what some of my colleagues are seeking to do is to make sure that the expenditures of those education management corporations, at least to the extent that they're spending them on the types of things we require public schools to report on, uh, we, we want to also require them to similarly report on that. So we need to know when do taxpayers or dollars are going into these schools, how much of that money is going into the classroom and how much of it's being spent on administration and profit. Yeah, it's it's very important that the money, you know, we know where the money's going exactly. Yes, you want the detailed parent. information. Um, so I appreciate and applaud your efforts. It seems like that's a, been a focus on, uh, on of yours over the last year or so. Um, yeah, so we definitely yeah. appreciate that you're on top of that because it seems like something that may get missed or swept under the rug. Um, whenever you have private companies involved in public action, there always seems to be a little bit of... Uh, corruption, I guess. Yeah, when you have to make sure that they, that, that is uh, watched out for and that we have watchdogs and that the citizens have the, the right information. And if you want to look at it from um, you know a standpoint of minding the public till, you would think that our conservative colleagues 
would be rushing to get this kind of transparency and accountability because they always talk a good game about being fiscally responsible. But when it comes to charter schools, which have the owners of which have poured millions of dollars into their campaigns, suddenly they're not interested in the kind of transparency and accountability that they demand of public schools. So uh, to me, that's uh, an area of um, real hypocrisy that we're seeing in Lansing and something that hopefully uh, we can get past uh, once the election period's over. Nice. Like I said, we definitely appreciate the hard work that you're doing. Um, we do have to move on. Is there any way that people can contact you for more information, help support your campaign for the next you know, 48 hours before <laughs> the election? Is there anything that people should know or how to contact you if they need more information? Yeah, certainly. Well, there is my campaign website, which is voteirwin.com. There's always opportunities for folks to, to donate and support the efforts, and I appreciate that opportunity. But there's also a lot of uh, information on there about the kinds of things I'm working on and contact information if people want to, to reach out and get more information from me. Excellent. Jeff, thank you so much right, for your good time. Luck. Um, good luck. We hope to see you on the victory side Tuesday night, yes. and you uh, be safe and take care. All right. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Vote shower. Thank you. Bye-bye. Powered by Iron Laboratories. Did you know quality paints and varnishes were made from hemp seed oil until 1937? How to tell if your girlfriend's a psycho. I drink paint every day. Two steps higher, your old school head shop has your full selection of smoking needs. Water pipes, hand pipes, concentrate pipes, concentrate accessories, vaporizers, rolling papers, detox products, women's clothing, t-shirts, disc golf, skateboards, and hookahs, bitch! Check us out online at twostepshigher.com or give us a call, 655-0032. At Iron Laboratories, our mission is to apply the highest scientific standards to the testing of medical marijuana and derivative cannabis-based products. Iron Laboratories achieves this through the strict application of and adherence to methodologies that have been developed in research, regulatory, and academic settings. Consumer safety directs everything we do at Iron Laboratories. Our role as providers of product information to patients, caregivers, and producers is critical. The purity of the medicines that you put in your body is critically important important and we value the trust you put in us to evaluate and accurately report on these products. In addition, Iron Laboratories will continue to contribute to the industry knowledge base, setting benchmarks and establishing norms to create safer cannabis products. Give us a call at 248-313-9000 or visit our website at ironlaboratories.com. Again, that's 248-313-9000, ironlaboratories.com. Folks, here's some food for thought. Every year, over 400,000 people die of illness related to tobacco use. Over 80,000 die from alcohol use. Over 30,000 die from reactions related to prescription medication. And more than 7,000 people die from the use of anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. Aspirin. Do you know how many die from the use of marijuana? Zero. No deaths can be directly linked to the use of cannabis. That makes it one of the safest substances available for medical use. Michigan Organic Solutions, Flint's premier medical marijuana consultants, is now offering compassionate doctor referrals. Get licensed for only $99. You only pay if you qualify. No medical records are required. Located at 3549 South North Highway, Suite 117, just across from the Dord Mall. Call 810-820-8953 or go online to make your appointment at www.miorganicsolutions.com. Consultations are free and your privacy is guaranteed. Log on now to www.miorganicsolutions.com. Skunk Work Show, powered by Iron Laboratories. Attention all units, attention all units, this is Sergeant Stadenko. Attention all units, this is Sergeant Stadenko. We are changing from a Code 3 direct pursuit to a Code 347. Completely lost due to incompetence. All right, we're back. Uh, that was a great interview with Jeff Irwin, state representative from the 53rd District. Um, I wish we could have talked a little bit about some cannabis, but, um, you know, what's important really is schools and funding and making sure, you know, people know the truth about charters and, you know, keeping this state rolling in the right direction. So we will get him back um, in the near future and talk with him again on the cannabis movement. But uh, right now we have Justin Jenkins from Oregon, and we're going to talk about Prop 91, which is Oregon's 
ballot initiative, now vote initiative to uh, legalize recreational marijuana. Justin Jenkins, how are you today? Excellent. How's it going today, guys? How are you good. doing out there? Really good. It's uh, cold. It snowed <laughs> yesterday for Halloween. All the kids uh, had to run around in the snow, but it's sunny today. Whoa. So Hey, are, are you guys even allowed to say that word on air? I mean, don't you get in That's a four-letter word, guys. Come on. Um, yeah, we <laughs> we say a lot of four-letter words around here. <laughs> sometimes they get on air and sometimes they don't. Um, how's everything looking? I mean, we're within, what, 48 hours, a little more, 72 hours from uh, the big vote. I've been yep. pumping my Facebook full of uh, Russ Belleville's Prop 91 um, information. Is it looking favorable? Are we going to get this one? Depends on who you ask. In my opinion, yes, it's looking favorable. It is. We are. Uh, it's it's midterm election, obviously, so the turnout's not going to be um, during during a presidential cycle or anything like that, or a major election cycle. But my hopes are the sky high. Honestly, a lot of polling is indicating that we are still over fifty percent. Uh, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Very good thing. I think most people realize, even if they're not in the cannabis movement. Most adults realize the futility of locking people up for marijuana. I think the cat's out of the bag and they know it's not, you know, this big devil weed and it's not causing a lot of trouble and harm. And the the real part of cannabis is now known. So I think most people are, are over it. You know, I honestly, okay, it's 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 the ebb and flow of a, of a tide, you know, Um Every, every year we get a little bit further. It's almost like global warming takes effect on uh, how far we push forward. You know what I mean? The, the coastline gets a little shorter. We're almost there. This is the tsunami year. This is the tsunami year, in my opinion, my idea. This is, if you look what's going on in federal courts right now, with uh, normal going to task, with the uh, basically people in charge of keeping it, marijuana as a Schedule One is a possibly about to be lowered. It still could take about two, three months, so it will possibly go into the new year, but the, the, the pebble fell into the pond today, I, you know, this, this year. An amazing thing. Right, right. Um, we just want them to move it to at least the Schedule 3 category and not the 2 because we don't want pharma to get a hold of it, and if they move yeah. it into 2, it becomes a fine. Isn't that's it categorized with LSD and heroin? Currently. Yeah, yeah. currently. That's yeah. what I mean. Like, you know? Yep, and that's the thing is you don't if you right now it's Schedule One, which is like the worst. It's the most dangerous, harmful chemical known to man. Schedule Two puts it in a pharmaceutical category, which and that terrifies me. Yeah, because yeah. it takes it out of our hands. You know, it it, it and, really turns it over it, to big business. Exactly, and if, I mean, you can't really lie to yourself and you know t- keep telling yourself it's it's absolutely 100% medical and if we try to use that as our main defense and in courts and everything it's going to bite us in the butt. Yeah, you know? I I agree. I think it's time to be honest. Relaxation is a form of medication. And that's why we need it to be below schedule 2 because we need it to be able to be a form of absolute relaxation. It's our culture needs to relax a little bit and I think it'll help. Absolutely, you so, know. This measure 91 is going to allow up to eight ounces, and you'll be able to grow uh, four plants? For yes. Yes. That's the best part about it. We four. still allow for our own personal cultivation. That's smart move, man. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's very smart. You know, we, we're, our medical patients here in Michigan can have 12 plants. You know, if, so you think four to 12, that's a big difference, only a third. But, hey, this is for legal movement, and you still get four. Well, and here's the thing. Yeah, our, our, you know, you guys, unfortunately, in a northern climate, um, you know, shorter plants, you guys obviously had raw, uh, laws written with the, the intent of knowing exactly what kind of climate you are. People are indoor, smaller plants. In, in Oregon, right, you know, we, we have uh, six plants for our medical. And uh, the best part about Measure 91 is it, it doesn't change anything of the medical it doesn't even touch it it allows it to live off on its own business nice that that's a smart move i like that that is a smart i think i'm gonna move move there (laughs) (laughs) there you go skunky's on his way that's yeah that that's uh that's a smart move you know that's people need to have a little more forethought sometimes when they're writing this you know michigan voted in 2008 for their medical marijuana program and to this yeah. day 
we're still fighting over dispensaries and provisioning centers and what city will allow it and which ones won't. And because the law was so vague, it left all these interpretations open for lawyers and judges and prosecutors to argue over, and it just really turned into a mess. It is, and that's, they were specifically, um, most of the marijuana laws regarding medical marijuana in the, in, in the states were, were kind of, sometimes in my opinion, hastily written, were shot together, where uh, let's get this on the ballot quick, and unfortunately it left a lot of holes for prodigious legislation. Uh, you know, litigation against them, and they allowed for judges to find these gaps and loopholes. And you know, um, this, it, I, I hate to bring back to, one, to 91 again, but one of the best things about this law, and, and one of the absolute best things about this law, is it is the most liberal cannabis law that we will see ever again voted on. Because nice. every time we make a law that is liberal. It gets pushed, it, gets, it fails, and then they make a more conservative one to try again. So if people fail to vote for this one, the next one that comes along will be far more conservative. You will probably not get the right to grow plants. It will probably have a higher tra- tax structure. It is necessary we pass it this time. Well, we, we definitely have our fingers crossed here in Michigan because, of course, whatever happens there will affect the rest of the country. It will affect oh, yeah. us, and we're looking forward to... Uh, a victory come Tuesday night. And what I read, too, is uh, they're going to be taxing $35 on every ounce. So they're not going by a percentage. It's just a flat $35 rate. That's what I read. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's going to be doled out directly. I think it was uh, 40% to common fund, 20% to mental health. Uh, it was like 15 20% for police and uh, 21% for local law enforcement. And I think uh, the rest of that went to the Oregon Health Authority. That's oh, excellent. I like that. I like that. And 35 isn't too bad either, I feel. No, no, a that's a yeah. flat tax. That's the way to go because now you're not, you know, there's no incentive for any kind of troubles or any backdoor scam. It's, it is what it is. Every ounce is 35 oh, so. bucks and it's done deal and there's no, you know, hustles. Um, oh, and you're, you'll love this part too. That's another good part about this law is that it was also written into the law that state municipalities, uh, cities and municipalities, cannot produce another law regarding marijuana. They cannot produce their own taxes. They cannot produce their own structure. They have to follow the state law to the T. That's a great stopgap so that there will not be any cities uh, banning it or anything like that. That is cool. That's really cool. We're going to be rooting for you come Tuesday night and for the whole state of Oregon and the whole freedom of the united states so we hope it goes your way we'll catch up with you next week and talk about what happened on tuesday so we appreciate your time justin jenkins writes for the cultivator he also works or heads up the heads of jefferson glass he's a he's a entrepreneur to say the least in the cannabis movement (laughs) and we appreciate it so justin thank you someone entrepreneurial mostly crazy justin (laughs) thank you so much we'll talk to you next week absolutely guys have a good one thank you bye-bye All I right. prefer ganjapreneur. Yeah, so you know, right? Right on. In this industry, there's a ganjapreneur. He, he's a really cool yeah, cat, I man. Like him. I've known him. Uh, I met him in Denver in 2013 at the Cup, and uh, I'm glad I've kept contact with him. Real cool guy, smart guy, and he's an asset for us. Um, right now, we've got Skunky's Bud Report, and Skunky, take it away. Yes. Hello, this is Uncle Skunky in the Bud Report for November 1st, 2014. I'm a little biased today. I'm only going to be talking about Detroit. Usually I travel around Michigan and try some other flavors out, but it was a busy week and I've only made it to Detroit. So we got, uh, of course, the original, one of the everybody's favorite, and that's why I'm Uncle Skunky, is Skunk Number One, which is a hybrid. And this one is a strain that was created in the mid 80s. And, you know, they have taken actually, uh, they have worked for the genetics from like Central South America, Afghanistan, Thailand, a whole bunch of places to get this flavor. And then eventually, you know, you had uh, like three or four different uh, seed banks, Dutch Passion, Nirvana Seeds, Royal Queen Seeds. They all came up with a skunk number one. So there's a little bit difference between them all. Great, gives a great uh, cerebral euphoria high. It's great for creative, gives you that good high energy buzz. And the taste is always that good, skunky, sweet, earthy. That's my favorite. And uh, then so I picked up another one, which was Grape Skunk. 
Mm. Now, this is an indica. So this is great for the pain and the stress, great for arthritis, migraines, you know, the people that have trouble sleeping, great for sleeping. But this one uh, is originally from three strains, grapefruit, skunk, and blueberry. So it's got that strong odor like the blueberries, a little bit of skunky earthiness. And depending on your environment, you can get like this cool electric blue, I guess, out of it. And this one's a quick uh, flowering one, only seven to eight weeks. Um, and yeah, that's uh, right there, the grape skunk. And then the last one is purple tie, which is a nice sativa. And that's uh, basically a two strain cross of a Highland Oxygen Gold and a chocolate tie. Yeah, so that's it. That one's great for a good, happy head high with good energy. And uh, that's it for Uncle Skunky Bud Report for November 1st. Nice. So there was a few key ones in there. That's always uh, good. <laughs> um, Skunky. <laughs> I like it. So uh, it's Election Day Tuesday. Get out there. Make sure you vote. You have all day to do it from, let's call it, from 9 to 8, it's which I believe it's from 9 to 9. So get Iron it done. Laboratories. Folks, here's some food for thought. Every year, over 400,000 people die of illness related to tobacco use. Over 80,000 die from alcohol use. Over 30,000 die from reactions related to prescription medication. And more than 7,000 people die from the use of anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. Aspirin. Do you know how many die from the use of marijuana? Zero. No deaths can be directly linked to the use of cannabis. That makes it one of the safest substances available for medical use. Michigan Organic Solutions, Flint's premier medical marijuana consultants, is now offering compassionate doctor referrals. Get licensed for only $99. You only pay if you qualify. No medical records are required. Located at 3549 South North Highway, Suite 117, just across from the Dord Mall. Call 810-820-8953 or go online to make your appointment at www.miorganicsolutions.com. Consultations are free and your privacy is guaranteed. Log on now to www.miorganicsolutions.com. The real estate market is moving full speed ahead, so don't be left behind. Remember Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Nowak with Century 21 Town & Country, and I'm here to help you whether you're buying your first home or thinking of selling and moving on up. Let me guide you in the right direction. Call me at 248-835-2992. Again, it's 248-835-2992, and my focus will be on your needs. Remember Kim. At Iron Laboratories, our mission is to apply the highest scientific standards to the testing of medical marijuana and derivative cannabis-based products. Iron Laboratories achieves this through the strict application of and adherence to methodologies that have been developed in research, regulatory, and academic settings. Consumer safety directs everything we do at Iron Laboratories. Our role as providers of product information to patients, caregivers, and producers is critical. The purity of the medicines that you put in your body is critically important important and we value the trust you put in us to evaluate and accurately report on these products. In addition, Iron Laboratories will continue to contribute to the industry knowledge base, setting benchmarks and establishing norms to create safer cannabis products. Give us a call at 248-313-9000 or visit our website at ironlaboratories.com. Again, that's 248-313-9000, ironlaboratories.com. The Skunk Work Show, powered by Iron Laboratories. All right, you sat in with us at the Skunk Work Show. As always, we appreciate it. This has been a Kevin Nowak Media production. Take it away, Skunky. I just want to make sure that everyone goes out to vote because it is very important to vote and to bring in uh, these political people in office in our town, state, and country. So it's just very important that everybody goes out and vote. Even you young folks that don't go out and vote, go out and vote.